Hey guys, so I'm on here to give a quick word. I always say quick word. Why does my shirt look weird? I don't know why my shirt's like that. But I'm on here to give a quick word, guys. Um, this is a serious word. I've never had a dream like this. Um, so I'm going to give it to you how the Lord gave it to me. Um, allow him to minister to you the way he chooses to minister it to you guys. Um, but what he's saying in this dream, oh, wait guys, I'm gonna pause you guys cause I need to get my note from my phone. Hold on. My bad y'all, had to pause y'all cause I left very important information in my phone and I'm recording this on my phone. Um, but I had a dream last night guys and the Lord was showing me death, like not no spiritual death, but actual death guys, actual death. Um, this is a judgment word um, in a sense, but it's also um, insight for a lot of you and what you're about to see. So take this to God, take me back to God, Lord speak through me, minimize me, maximize yourself. Like in Jesus name, amen. Cause guys, I, I never had a dream like this before. And I'm not a person, God, when he puts dead people in my dreams, like relatives, they never talk to me in the dreams. Cause the Lord knows like his scripture speaks on, his word speaks on us not having any communication with the dead. So I see some people and they're like, yeah, my auntie talked to me in my dreams or people get happy when dead relatives do not. God knows I, nobody talks to me that's dead in my dreams, guys. He says that the living have no communication with the dead. That is not uh, cute to me. Um, I was telling a sister in Christ this morning, she was laughing at me, but I was dead serious. I said, I wish my grandma would be sitting on my bed or I wake up and it's something crazy because grandma is going to get knocked slap out. Okay. I love my grandma, but she is dead and gone. My grandma do not sit up. <laughs> grandma knows not to dot foot in this house. Okay. She knows not to what the old people used to say back in the day. Like my mom used to be like, don't you dot my door. That means do not take a step out of that door. Okay. She knows not to step, take a step in my door. Okay. My grandma is dead. My dad has passed away. Okay. Love them both. Uh, do not come back and talk to me because we don't got nothing to talk about because you're dead. Okay. I'm not, I don't get the prophetic voices that thinks it's cute to interpret a dream. And they're like, yeah, my auntie was talking to me and this means this. Nah, sis, bro. That means you're um, dealing with a familiar spirit. Okay. And you need to break that chain. I, I don't get down with the dead stuff talking to me. And I, it's, God is not going to contradict his word. I do, but, <laughs> no. Okay. Um, so when he puts dead people in my dreams, we do not have conversations. I may see something of them and I know God is saying, you know, he's raising dry bones or whatever. He'll give me the interpretation of what he's trying to say, but nobody dead talks to me in my dream, guys. I don't play that. I don't get down with that. I don't see how prophetic voices speak on it and they talk about it like it's something cute. It's not cute to me. If God needs to get a message across, he could use a live person, okay? And I just, I don't want to get too far into that, but... This type of dream is like a dream that I've never had before. And the Lord is speaking of actual death, okay? And um, when I woke up from this dream, I heard a conversation between two people, okay? And I'm looking at my notebook because I wrote it down. I recorded it on my phone too. But I heard a conversation between two people. And I heard a man say, what did I write? Okay, I heard a man say, by the end of the week, we are going to get them. And then I heard a woman say, I don't want to wait until the end of the week. Let's get them now. Okay, I heard that. Like, I was awake when I heard that, guys. I heard it loud and clear, like the conversation play out. A man said, by the end of the week, we are going to get them. The woman said, I don't want to wait until the end of the week. Let's get them now. Okay, that was a conversation between Satan and one of his little minions, okay? His little demonic angels, okay? And God does not um, cause destruction on anybody, okay? We all make choices, but he allows everything that happens in this world under the sun, God allows it. If it happens, God allowed it to happen because he has the ability to stop anything, okay? Does not mean he causes diseases and all this stuff, nah, but he will allow it, okay? Why he allows certain things, y'all gotta ask God that. But 
in scripture, it speaks on him having control over everything. He even says the rich are rich and the poor are poor because he allows it. God has the final say. Doesn't mean he causes it, but he will allow things to happen. Okay, nothing can happen under the sun in this world and it be a go without God allowing it to happen. Okay, um, and we won't know all the answers to why he allows. Job is still waiting on an answer, okay, for why his situation happened. We don't get a reason for everything, but God allows things to happen, okay? But I heard this conversation loud and clear, okay? And that means this week, like as in the week we're in, okay? I'm going to read that one more time. I heard a man say, by the end of the week, we are going to get them. I heard a woman say, I don't want to wait until the end of the week. Let's get them now, okay? And you guys can take me back to God, take this whole message back to God. Y'all know I don't care because I fear God. So I'm not gonna tell you guys anything that I didn't really hear. I, I speak truth, take it to God, okay? That's what I heard. So for many of you guys, you're gonna see um, some unexpected things happen before this week is out, okay? So in this dream, I walked into an apartment. The apartment belonged to my sister, Tara, okay? This was a messy, like really dirty apartment. There was stuff everywhere. It was not a nice apartment. It was like really dirty and messy and so forth, right? And it was, um, there was light in there, but it was like dark. Like it felt dark, it looked dark, okay? Um, but there was light in it, like a little bit of light and it was nighttime. And I walked into this apartment and I walked to the kitchen counter and I see this lady at the counter and she looks like, my friend Vicky, somebody I know in real life. And I looked at her and I, I like jumped a second and I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, you look just like Vicky. And in the dream, Vicky was dead. Okay, so I jumped because this lady is at my sister's counter and she looks like my friend Vicky who's dead. Okay, in real life, Vicky is alive. But in this dream, I knew Vicky was dead and that this lady looked exactly like her. They had the same face, same teeth, everything, right? So my sister was like, yeah, she looks just like Vicky. That's Vicky's cousin. And my sister was like, same teeth and everything, okay? And this lady had like big teeth, right? This lady had big teeth. Miss Vicky used to have big teeth like... um really like crooked teeth in real life. And I'm not saying this to be funny, but in real life, my friend Vicky had uh, really messed up teeth and she since got a whole new smile. She got new teeth, she has a pretty smile. But in this dream, this lady standing at the counter had the same like big crooked teeth as Vicky used to have, right? So again, my sister's like, yeah, this is Vicky's cousin or whatever. So I'm like, oh, okay. And I look at the cousin, I'm like, you look so much like Miss Vicky. And she's like, I know. She's like, um, well, that's good. You feel that way. And she grabbed a piece of paper and she writes something on the paper. It's a prayer. And she gave it to me. She was like, can you take this? And I was like, sure, whatever. I was like, yeah. I took her prayer and she like left and walked out of the door, right? The scene switches to my sister going to the back room to get it, to get ready for bed. Again, this house was dark, dirty, guys. It was a whole bunch of stuff everywhere. So my sister walks to the back room and she goes into the bedroom. She falls asleep, right? And um, I go into this room and there's like several beds in this room, right? And it's, again, guys, it's messy, it's dirty. And my sister's knocked out sleeping and um, she's just, she's out cold, right? And I'm looking for a place to sleep, but there was no clean place for me. Like there was no bed for me to lay on. There was nothing for me to um, to cover up with. Like there was no place for me to lay, right? And I look at this one bed and I knew that this bed belonged to my sister, Tammy. And this bed is like the same color sheets as mine. It's made up, it's really nice and neat. Um, but I didn't wanna lay on her bed because I knew she was coming home to sleep and I didn't wanna have to wake up and give her her bed. So I just left her bed, but the rest of the house was messy. Like everything was messy. My sister Tara's bed was messy. Everything was dirty, stuff on the floor, whatever. I just couldn't find a place to sleep. So I walk out of the room and I go look in this other room. This other room is super dark, guys. And I get to the door of this other room in her apartment and I see my dad's shadow on the wall, like walking from the back of the room towards the door that I was standing at. Like I see his shadow. My dad, I posted a picture of him in the community tab before. He has long hair. Uh, he literally, they used to call him Black Jesus, but I see his whole shadow 
on the wall coming towards the door that I'm standing at and I took off running. I ran back to the back room that my sister Tara was at and I woke her up and I was like, wake up Tara. I'm like, dad's shadow is in the other room. I'm like, dad is in the other room. I was like, he's there. I didn't say his shadow. I said, dad is in the other room, okay? I said, dad is in the other room, wake up. And I'm in panic mode because again, I know my dad's dead, right? My sister wakes up and she's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe he's here. I wanted to take a picture with him. And I look at her and I'm like, Tara, you can't take a picture with him. He's a spirit. I'm like, you can't take a picture with a spirit. The spirit is not gonna show in the picture. And she just looks at me and she gets up to go walk in the room and we go back in the room. There's nobody in the room, right? So we look at the door and I'm like, Miss Vicky's cousin left your door wide open so anybody could have came in the door, right? And she's like, wow, she did leave my door open, guys. And again, it's nighttime. Everything's messy, okay? And my sister goes back in the room. She goes back to sleep. I'm still looking for a place to sleep. There's no place in there. That was the end of the dream, okay? Again, when I woke up from that dream, I heard a man say, by the end of the week, we are going to get them. And I heard a woman say, I don't want to wait until the end of the week. Let's get them now, okay? And let me back up. In that dream, uh, when my sister got up to go to the other room with me, my nephew Isaiah appeared for like a brief second out of nowhere. He appeared there with us, but it was kind of like he was there, but then he was gone, okay? That's significant. So that was the end of the dream. Guys, what the Lord is showing in this dream, um, me seeing, I'm just going to skip. How do you want me to explain this, Lord? Okay, I walk into the apartment. It's nighttime. The apartment's messy. It's dirty, okay? It represented a house that's defiled. It, it's dirty. God is not in it. Nothing's in its place. It's a house of chaos, okay? It's a house of chaos and of darkness, okay? And I'm going to back what I'm saying up with scripture. But it's a house of chaos and darkness, I look at the countertop, I, I jump because I see a lady that looks like my friend Vicky in real life, okay? But I, in the dream, Vicky was dead. So this lady scared me because I thought Vicky was at the counter. So I kind of jumped. And my sister's like, no, this is Vicky's cousin or whatever. She's like, they even have the same teeth, whatever, whatever. And the lady was like, you know, I'm glad you recognize me. Like she was almost relieved that I recognized her. So she writes a prayer on a piece of paper, gives it to me. Um, to take, I take it and she leaves out of the door, okay? Vicky, the name Vicky means victory, okay? Her cousin at the counter that looked like Vicky, even though I knew Vicky was dead, okay, represented a familiar spirit portraying victory in a dark environment, okay? A familiar spirit, okay, another word for a familiar spirit is a household servant, okay? It's a, a spirit ran by Satan that comes to serve a household, darkness, okay? Demonic things. And we we talked about this, so I'm not going to get too far into that. But the lady, Vicky's cousin, who looked like her, represented a familiar spirit of victory, okay? Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. A lot of people, um, including my family that operates in darkness, Satan has their mind set up to, for them to think that they're walking in victory, that they have it all together, that without God, they're good, okay? Which is why a lot of them stay in a rebellious state because the Lord will allow Satan to build these people up, the cars, the houses, whatever. And they have a, a state of mind of victory, okay? But this is a familiar spirit. Victory, as in Vicky, was dead, okay? There was no victory in that house. It's a familiar spirit. And I hope you guys are following me. In the dream, my sister mentions, like, she even has the same teeth as um, Vicky. And I was like, yeah, she does. In real life, guys, Vicky, my friend, had a messed up smile. She got her teeth fixed, okay? She is a person that the Lord has had me prophesy to her and tell her to give her life over to God. Her marriage is failing. Uh, she's went through health issues. She's lukewarm, okay? I've had a prophesy to her a few months ago. I was like, if you want your marriage to work, God is saying you need to come to him. You're lukewarm. She admitted to being lukewarm and walking in darkness. Has that changed at this time? No. So even though the lady who looked like her represented a familiar spirit, it also represented Vicky in a sense, okay? And there is a death that's getting ready to take place of some sort when it comes to my friend Victor, Vicky. I'm giving it to you guys how God gave it to me. 
okay? There's a death that's getting ready to take place in her life of some sort, okay? God doesn't care about you getting your smile fixed and all these things to put together the outside. He looks at the heart. There's darkness there, okay? So how he sees Vicky is still as if she has a messed up mouth, okay? Because her heart is not well. Her heart is not pure. So even though in real life, Vicky has a very pretty smile, cosmetic dentistry, she's gotten spent money on her mouth, God sees her as having buck teeth still, okay? Because he looks at the heart. He doesn't judge by the outside, okay? And I hope y'all are following me. This familiar spirit of victory was in this dark place, in this dark house. My sister didn't even pay attention to the chaos and the nastiness in our house. Everything's out of place. I did. You know why? Because light does not mix with darkness. We don't mix with the world. So I didn't find comfort in that. My sister found comfort in it. Why? Because Satan... He will use a familiar spirit to make you feel like you're in victory. You're living a triumphant life. And that is a lie from the pit of hell, okay? When in reality, you're standing in death, okay? Sorry, guys, someone texted me. In reality, you're standing in death. So she gives me this prayer. I take it. Don't even know what I did with it in the dream. Um, but I took the prayer and she leaves out of the door, okay? Again, this familiar spirit left my sister's door wide open to darkness, okay? It was nighttime outside. She walks out doors wide open, okay? The scene switches to, oh, in her prayer, again, familiar spirit. It's, <laughs> I don't even have to go into that. Those that have ears to hear, you hear, okay? Okay. You guys have heard me say my um, ex-husband got on his knees for me to pray for him. God said he didn't accept it. He saw the heart, okay? It's the familiar spirits that are operating also behind these people that are saying, pray for me. Um, I really want to give my heart to God, but that's a familiar spirit, okay? They're, they they come to us to pray for them because they are familiar with the type of people that we are. We will pray for anybody, okay? But that, that prayer is not coming from a pure-hearted person, okay? God is done hearing all of those prayers. This is a, a, um, a season of death, okay? I'm going to give it to you guys straight. It's a season of death, okay? The scene switches... And my sister goes to this back room. She gets in the bed. She she goes to sleep. I follow her a little bit after I go into this room. Again, there's junk on the floor. I can't find a, a place to lay. There's no space for me to lay, okay? Darkness does not mix with light. I will never find comfort in darkness, okay? I will never fa find comfort in a defiled environment. There was no place for me to lay because darkness does not mix with light, okay? I was in a dark place. I was actually in what the Lord considered um, the shadow of death, okay? And we're gonna, we're gonna pick that up. We're, we're gonna back this up with scripture. But she goes and she lays down in her messy, defiled bed, okay? <laughs> Catch that. She goes to sleep. At, at this point, as she's sleeping, she's spiritually dead. God was showing my sister spiritually dead. This is the same sister Tara, whose name means tower. And the Lord uses her a lot to represent darkness in high places. Okay, we don't wrestle against each other, but it's the spirit operating behind the person. Okay, this is also the same sister that the Lord has told me to tell her, give your life to God and he'll heal you. She, she has a sickness, um, physical sickness. I've explained that to you guys. She refuses to, but she acknowledges, oh, God already told me to give my life to him in 2019, but she has not, okay? That's um, rebellion, okay? That's her um, being intentionally rebellious, okay? So as she's sleeping, God is showing a spiritual dead person, okay? But there's real deaths taking place in this hour, okay? I'm still up looking for somewhere to lay. There's nowhere to lay. I look at my sister Tammy's bed and her bed is made. It's pretty, it's nice, but I didn't want to sleep in her bed because I knew she was coming back home. Okay, Tammy, her name, one of the meanings, it means palm tree. A palm tree is a leader. You guys remember when the Lord was entering into Jerusalem and the people lined his path with palm trees, okay? God will use my sister often in the dream to represent him, okay? In this dream, my sister Tammy who had gotten up and left, she wasn't there, but her bed was made, okay, represented the Lord. The Lord will never leave you. We leave him, but he never leaves you, okay? At this point, the Lord had left out of this room, left his bed made, okay? Um, it was a done deal. Again, God is not accepting prayers for a lot of these people at this time. He's just about to do what he's about to do. He's laid in the room with them. He's tried to get through to them. There was no listening, okay? So at this point, 
the Lord was, he had gotten up. Okay. The bed was made. It was clean. It was the same color mint green as my sheets on my bed. Okay. He had gotten up and left. Okay. What he can't teach you by telling you, he's going to teach you by experience and he will turn a deaf ear to your prayers in order to go ahead and just proceed with what he's about to do. Okay. And that just showed the Lord being there at one point in time, but there was no movement towards the light. So he got up, okay, his place was clean. The Lord, there's nothing um, defiled or unrighteous about the Lord, okay? So his bed was clean. I didn't wanna lay in Tammy's bed, hence palm tree, the Lord, which represents a leader. In this dream, Tammy represented him. Um, the Lord was not in that room anymore, okay? God will turn a deaf ear to your prayers. He's only gonna speak so many times. So at this point, she's just in a room sleeping, spiritually dead, okay? But God is speaking of physical deaths and she's just in this defiled room, okay? A room of chaos. And I don't know if you guys remember in um, 2 Kings, uh, we'll, we'll get to that. Anyways, I walk out of this room and I go into the other room because I'm looking for somewhere to lay. I see on the wall of this other room, everything's dark, but I see a shadow. And I, the shadow is my dad and it's walking towards me towards this other room door. So before that shadow can turn into a physical person or death standing in front of me, I ran from that room, okay? I ran from that room. Um, and this is self-explanatory. Self um, Psalms 23 verse four. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I, I fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Okay, I'm gonna read that one more time. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I was in the valley of the shadow of death, okay? There's death taking place, physical death, okay? My dad is physically dead in real life. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me, okay? I was in the valley of the shadow of death at my sister's house, okay? There are deaths taking place. And some of the stuff that you guys are about to see, even in your own families, you're going to run. Like, it's going to be scary. You're not going to want to see these things. It's not just a spiritual death. Catch this word, guys. It's not just spiritual. I was in the valley of the shadow of death in my sister's apartment, her defiled home, messy, chaotic, darkness. I was in it, okay? The voice, I, the conversation I heard with the man and the woman, okay, this week, a lot of stuff is taking place before the end of this week. Again, the man said, by the end of this week, we are going to get them. The woman said, I don't want to wait until the end of the week. Let's get them now. And again, take this message back to God, guys. And I'm probably going to have to pause you guys because I have a meeting. So I run from that room to get my sister. I wake her up and I'm telling her like, dad is in the other room. Like dad's here. She gets up and she's like, oh man, he's here. I wanted to take a picture with him. And I'm telling her, Girl, it's a spirit. You can't take a picture with the spirit. It won't show in the picture, okay? Again, spiritually dead, okay? We we don't have any dealings with the dead. God tells us when we pick up our cross and walk, let the dead bury itself. But she wanted a picture with the dead, okay? And a lot of your family members, they're about to get a pic the picture with the dead, okay? A picture with the dead because there are actual deaths taking place, okay? Again, she was sleeping, spiritually dead. They don't connect with us on the same level. I had to tell her that's a spirit. It's not going to show in the picture. Okay. She gets up. She walks to the room. We look in the room. He's gone. My nephew Isaiah appears for a quick second, but he's like there and he's not there. Okay. The Lord was using him for his name, which means God saves, but also for the scriptures that I'm going to hit with you guys for this word. Um, so I'm going to pause you for a second because I have a meeting and then you're going to see the screen jump and we're going to jump into the scriptures. Okay. Okay. So let's get to the scripture, guys. Um, Isaiah appeared in the dream for a quick second and then it's like he disappeared. Okay. Again, his name means God saves. Um, but the Lord also wanted me to hit these scriptures with you guys. Um, in 2 Kings, when Isaiah was sent to, um, when prophet Isaiah was sent to speak to Hezekiah and tell Hezekiah like, bruh, you're about to die. Okay. And I'm paraphrasing that part, but we're going to read 2 Kings um, chapter 20, verse 1. I'm going to read from the NIV version. It says, in those days, Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to him and said, this is what the Lord says. 
put your house in order because you are going to die. You will not recover, okay? The Lord sent Isaiah to give Hezekiah that message, okay? The Lord is telling many of you to give your family members the same message, okay? Get your house in order. Again, my sister's house was out of order. It was in like disarray. It was a hot mess. It was dirty. Get your house in order because you are about to die and you will not recover, okay? And, and there's a period. We stop at that verse. We know Hezekiah went after this and he fell on his face praying to the Lord, asking the Lord to spare his life. And guess what? The Lord granted him 15 more years, okay? The magic word in this, um, in this time, at this time, is Jesus, okay? And it's up to Jesus whether he wants to spare their lives or not. But y'all are about to see physical deaths in your families, Okay, a lot of people don't like to speak on it. I got to speak on it how God gives it to me in the dream and how he interprets it for me, okay? There's going to be actual deaths. Some of them, God will spare their lives, but some of them, he is not going to, okay? Again, has, um, 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 1, NIV version. In those days, Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah son of Amos, went to him and said, okay, in this dream, Isaiah appeared. Isaiah is my sister Tara's son in real life, okay? This is what the Lord says. Put your house in order because you are going to die. You will not recover, okay? Their magic word is Jesus. Your prayers ain't gonna help. It's not, nope. God has turned to deaf ear. For who this is for, God has turned to deaf ear. Their magic word is Jesus. It's on them. Okay, I'm not God, so I can't say whose life he's going to spare and who he's not going to spare. But I know um, the valley of the shadow of death is right now. Okay, it's right now. Um, one second, guys. I'm going to read um, from the New King James Version Bible. I'm going to read Matthew chapter 3. Verse 16, <laughs> 316, I didn't already spoke on that earlier this week. God is confirming, guys. Um, Matthew chapter 3, I'm sorry, actually, nope, I'm not going to read 316. I'm going to read Matthew chapter 4, it's meant for me to say 316, did a whole word on it. Um, Matthew chapter 4, I'm going to read um, from verse 16 and 17, okay, and these are, um, verse 16 was actually spoken by prophet Isaiah in um, Isaiah chapter 9. Yeah, Isaiah chapter 9. These same verses were spoken, but they're spoken again here in Matthew um, so that the prophecy that Isaiah spoke could be fulfilled, okay? And Jesus follows up speaking in scripture 17, in verse 17. So let's read uh, Matthew chapter 4. Um, verses 16 and 17, it says, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light and upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. Okay. That scripture was spoken by prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter nine as well. Okay. From that time, Jesus began to preach and say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, okay? Their magic word is Jesus. They they can start repenting now and see how Jesus wants to handle it, okay? He is the head honcho in this matter, okay? He is the head honcho. Um, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and upon those who sat in the region in shadow of death, light has dawned, Okay? From that time, Jesus began to preach and say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So these people, they have a choice. Okay, the time is now. And some of them, it's a wrap. There is no, they will not um, recover. Okay, they will not recover. Um, I'm also going to read from Job chapter 10 verses 21 and 22. And this is when Job is like at the end of himself, okay? He's over. He's been taken through the ringer and he's just ready for God to just take his life, okay? He was done. It says, before I go to the place from which I shall not return, the land of darkness and the shadow of death, a land as dark as darkness itself, as the shadow of death without any order, where even the light is like darkness. 
I'm gonna read that one more time. Before I go to the place from which I shall not return, it's a permanent place, death, okay? To the land of darkness and the shadow of death, a land as dark as darkness itself, as the shadow of death without any order, where even the light is like darkness. God is speaking of physical deaths, guys. And y'all are gonna see a lot this week. Again, a November to remember, this is not just a spiritual death, okay? It's not just a spiritual death. Let me make sure I hit all the scriptures. Um, I'm gonna read from Psalms uh, 107, verses 10 through 12. Some sat in darkness, in utter darkness, prisoners suffering in iron chains because they rebelled against God's commands and despised the plans of the Most High. So he subjected them to bitter labor. Mm, Self-explanatory. Make sure I'm hitting everything, guys. Yeah, that's the word, guys. Expect to see physical deaths in this hour. It's not just spiritual, okay? Satan is a deceiver, okay? He is a deceiver. These familiar spirits that have been household servants for generation after generation have been operating through your family line, through my family line, but we all have a choice to choose to walk in darkness or partner with the light. Their choice was darkness, okay? So now they're about to see um, <laughs> darkness in, in reality, okay? They're about to have a picture with death, okay? They're about to have a picture with death. They, they chose to remain spiritually dead, which ultimately is leading to their physical death, okay? Take this back to God. Take, take this word back to God. Take me back to God. Y'all know, I don't care. I, I speak whatever God gives me. Take, take it all back to God. This is not for everybody, um, but who it's for, um, catch this word. Um, Satan is a liar. He deceived Adam and Eve. They were in the Garden of, e of Eden. Um, they were supposed to cultivate the land. The land was beautiful. Like they were in a beautiful place and Satan came and deceived. He tells Eve, you can eat of this tree. Um, you'll be just like God. You won't, you surely will not die. He's telling her all of this stuff, which was half truths. No, she didn't die physically, but she died spiritually. Her and Adam and got kicked out of the garden. Yeah, they did. Um, their eyes were open. They now knew good and evil. Okay? They now knew good and evil. They did become like God. How? We we're made in his image. So he tells half-truths. And those half-truths send people straight to hell because he comes to deceive. He comes to deceive. He does not give the whole story. Eat of this tree. You surely will not die. No, they didn't die physically. They died spiritually. And it led them to be kicked out of something beautiful into the world. A world of hard labor. Okay? A rebellious world. Death. You'll be like God. We are like God. We are made in his image. Your eyes will be open. Yeah, their eyes were open, all right. They now knew good and evil. And their act got them kicked out of the Garden of Eden. And then they had to go through a painful life. Hence, we're now having to go through what we're going through. All it takes is one person, one person to start a generational curse for generations and generations after. But we all have choices. Yeah, we were born into a sinful world. But we make a choice. Okay? When we stop thinking as a child, we make a choice to partner with God. But Satan has so many people deceived, okay? He takes them up to high places like he tried Jesus. Like, look at all this. He's telling Jesus. You know Satan is kind of like, he, he has to miss the marbles if he thought he can tempt Jesus, okay? Took Jesus up high on a mountain. Look, I can give you all this. Satan, do you know who Jesus' father is? Okay, you can't give Jesus nothing. But Satan, he, he thinks he's so wise and cunning, and he is. He tried Jesus. So you know he's going to try you and your family members. And some of them bit the bait. He was like, look at all I can give you. And they took it. And they have the houses, the cars, the money. And they're about to be dead. And go somewhere where 
they, they burn forever and ever and ever. It never stops. Hell is a real place. We're not here, guys. I'm not here to give cookie cutter Joel Olstein messages. Oh, it's all good. Nah, judgment is real. God is a just God. He's loving, but he's a just God. So many of you are um, about to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Um, but don't fear any evil. God is with you, okay? His rod and his staff, it's going to comfort you. You're good, but you're about to see some stuff. And you're not going to like it. I'm not going to like it. I, I don't like, yeah, yeah, I don't like death. I don't like the valley of the shadow of death. I took off running in this house. And I went to my sister who, and she's spiritually dead. So she's like, I wanted to take a picture. I'm like, girl, it's a spirit. Whew. That's the word, y'all. Um, again, when I woke up, I heard the conversation with the man and the woman. I explained that to you guys. Oh, and let me tell y'all how funny God is. When I woke up after I recorded everything that I just released to you guys, I was like, Lord, is this a physical death or spiritual? I'm like, what are you trying to show me? I heard the Lord speak out loud and he literally said, let me make sure I have it up. Hold on, guys. So many notes, so many notes. Where did I write it? Hold on, guys. I'm going to get this right. I might have to pause y'all because it's in my phone. Hold on. Yeah, it's in my phone. Hold on one second. Okay. And sorry for the noise. The people are mowing the grass outside. But when I woke up, I was like, Lord, is this a physical death? Is it spiritual? I'm like, what? Tell me what all of this means, right? And I knew what it meant, okay? I heard the Lord say, one six seven zero look it up like you do all the other numbers <laughs> like that's literally what i heard him say one six seven zero look it up like you do all the other numbers and he was telling me to look it up in the strong's concordance which is all biblical guys one six seven zero and the strong's hebrew concordance means diaba okay it's spelled d-e-a-b-a-h and it means fear sorrow and dismay fear sorrow and dismay okay dismay by definition means distress caused by something unexpected okay sorrow let me pull this up because i want to give you guys the definition the definition of sorrow is a feeling of deep distress caused by loss disappointment or other misfortune by oneself or others okay in fear let me give you the actual definition of fear guys it's an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous likely to cause pain or a threat diaba is 1670 it means fear sorrow and dismay and i literally heard the lord say one six seven zero look it up like you do all the other numbers <laughs> that is what he said to me the lord has a sense of humor and he will give it to you like that was his way of saying i just gave you a whole dream i know you understand the dream but let me break it down to you even further one six seven zero look it up like you do all the other numbers i can't make this up guys take it to god but that's the word. Let me get up off here and get back to work. Um, a lot of y'all are about to walk through the valley of the shadow of death, um, but you're chosen. Um, you don't have anything to fear. God is with you, but you're about to see some stuff that um, you don't want to see that's going to be within your family. Um, prodigals, of, that sit with God on it. Um, this is nothing new to you. If if this is for you, God has already spoken to you about it. This is not like, hey, this is happening. I know I didn't tell you. Nah. And these two people plotting, Satan and his, and his minion, okay? Satan said, by the end of the week, we're going to get, we're going to get them. The woman said, I don't want to wait until the end of the week. Let's get them now. Um, and I wasn't the only one. My sister in Christ, the Lord gave her the same message this morning or last night. This week was the word he gave her. This week. So, that's...
that's the word, y'all. Um, thank you guys that have sewn into me. Um, I've I really appreciate you guys and I say I don't tell you enough so I'm trying to make it more of a habit of just giving thanks to you guys whether it's financially um, prayers whatever I accept it all I love it all thank you so much for just um, sewing into me for um, being obedient and being here to hear what God has to say not what I have to say I'm just a vessel and I'm not perfect I'm actually pretty faulty and you guys get to see my faults as I'm on the word, like I, I let you guys in a lot according to what God allows me to share with you. And I'm not perfect and I don't ever plan to be perfect. God is the only perfect person, but um, I am perfect in the Lord I, in the Lord's eyes. He has deemed me as approved, okay? I'm made righteous through him just like you, but I am just the vessel. Um, don't ever idolize a prophetic voice. Um, idolize God and let let that be your only idol is capital G-O-D, not lowercase, but the Lord Jesus Christ um, because we are only vessels. But that's the word, y'all. I love y'all. Again, thank you so much. Those that have prayed for me, just sown seeds, just, um, just thank you. I really appreciate you guys. I'm going to try to say that even more because um, we should. We, we should say what we're thankful and grateful for. And I don't do this for finances or money or anything um, at all. Um, but yeah, I love y'all. Have a good, um, is today Thursday? Have a good Thursday, y'all. Um, what is today? Is today Wednesday or Thursday, guys? Ooh, it's Thursday, y'all. Today is the 321st day of the year. Three, two, one. Countdown, okay? Three, two, one. Countdown. We got 44, four, four days left in the year, but today is the 321st day. Three, two, one is a countdown going on. Catch that word. Catch that word, okay? And the number four in the concordance in Strong's, it means fruit. There's 44 days left in this year. Um, again, there's a side of judgment and a side of elevation that's taking place right now, but y'all are going to see physical deaths. Um, but I love y'all, um, whoever God has told you to relay a message to, uh, be obedient, even if they don't understand it, even if they don't accept it, that ain't your problem. When you're rejected, dust your feet and keep moving, but do whatever God's told you to do, but prepare your hearts, guys. Um, that's all for this word. Um, Yeah. Um, and I have a whole nother word to release because in the gym this morning, guys, God showed up. I was crying on the treadmill. No lie. <laughs> like I was working out crying. Um, but that's a whole different word. I don't know if I'm going to release it today, but it's powerful. Um, yeah, that's all, guys. I love y'all. Bye.